Mm -hmm. uh, do you have one that's consuming all your time? Do you have no physical activity? Do you eat out all the time, et cetera, et cetera? And you can look at areas that you could expand or improve that would really help bring you back into balance. So mm -hmm. it's just like a little roadmap. You know, if your finances are all askew and that's taking all your time, then okay, we need some help with that to reconsolidate or whatever it is that we need to do to bring that into to balance again, for instance. So that's the piece that we're really going to be working at. And then sometimes all you need to do is just break the routine of what we were doing before. And COVID certainly has done that. But <laughs> we've lost the ability to have fun. We work and work and work and work. We don't jump on the bed like we did when we were kids and just be silly and, and recharge ourselves with that childlike energy. Because you know when you go play, guess what happens? Your energy, your batteries recharge. And so Maya Angelou said her mission in life was not only to survive but to thrive and having passion and compassion for herself. And it really makes that difference. So when we look at the fact that if we don't have health, we don't have anything to really be the vehicle for our soul to get us to allow us to do the things that we want to do, right? Mm -hmm. And so we, let's start with the physical body and make sure that we aren't the jalopy and try and really get ourselves polished up. And what does it take to run a, a lean, efficient, um, car that'll take us that distance. Well, what wrecks our body is truly inflammation. And the inflammatory lifestyle that we lead is a real problem because 40%, this is 30%, this is an old slide, it's actually 40% of all cancers are related to inflammation. And to your point now, look at COVID. All right, so COVID actually turns on the cytokine or inflammatory response and all these different things that you might have, diabetes, uh, osteoarthritis, heart disease, uh, lung issues, all of these things are intensified by the inflammation that's turned on by COVID. And so what we want to do is we want to really look at things in our life that can dial down that inflammation so that we can have a good healthy body. And one of the first rules is, is to have good nutrition, okay? And your teeth are, God did not put teeth in your stomach. Not at all. You hear the teeth go in your mouth because you need to chew your food. And when you chew your food, you actually break it down such that the body is easy for the body to extract the nutrition. And it also signals hormones to be released for the gut and the brain to work together to know when you're full and when you're not, and also release different hormones for digestion. And we also have to learn that we need time to eat <laughs> because if we're just sitting here like quickly shoveling in in a 15 minute lunch, we won't, we won't feel satiety. Mm -hmm. Go look at those guys and gals that are binge eaters, you know, that they can just stuff an enormous amount of food in and, and not even have that hunger signal. But when you chew and you really reflect on your food, you eat less and you feel more satisfied and you feel better because you're not stuffed. And then what you do eat is also critical. So this is the, this is the rainbow that we encourage people. Your plate should look like a rainbow. And people go, well, man, I can't do that. What am I supposed to have, an eggplant for breakfast? No, no, but you know, if you have some purple food during the day and you have yellow food, all these phytonutrients actually uh, lower the inflammation in the body, and they also have cancer preventative features, particularly this class here, broccoli, cabbage, um, uh, Brussels sprouts, uh, those are called the cruciate vegetables, and they actually will decrease the risk of prostate and breast cancer. So this is really imperative because those are our biggest two cancers. And then processed foods are also horrible for the body. 
Number one, they have trans fats in them, which are not digestible. They uh, bind in the body. The body can't excrete them. They create an inflammatory milieu. They give you, um, because the, a lot of fiber has been processed out of it, so all you get are just empty calories. That's why people get fatter and fatter when these are the type of foods that you eat. Water is critical. And why? Our bodies are how much wa uh, How much percent water? Anybody Any know? Time. Close, very close. When you were a child, you were up around that range of 80% 80, 80 or more. But as an adult, we dropped down to almost mm, 70%. And what is the organ that has the most water in it? The brain. Okay. Exactly. So that just means that if we don't get enough water, we can't think straight. So it's imperative not only for, you know, your kidneys and weight loss and hydration, but your, your um, water also has a, sort of a thermostat type effect. So if you're tossing and turning all night long, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. Look at Naomi. Dad, she's drinking. That's great. Um, <laughs> I paid her to do that, by the way. And she'll be drinking very frequently. But it may be gin. I don't know. Um, at any rate... Uh, as it turns out, um, if you haven't had enough water during the day, you'll be hot, cold, hot, cold all night long and have poor sleep quality. So in the different size bottles here, this, this 12 inch three by three is 750 milliliters. So you wanna at least have two to three of those. You wanna at least have almost two liters of free water a day in addition to the other beverages that you take in, knowing that caffeine is a diuretic. Sleep is also incredibly important. And it's, it's found that people who are on night shift actually have more, morbi more morbidity than other populations because it's stressful and they're off their biorhythm. <laughs> and so you can have lots of things that can interrupt your sleep. You can have a bad mattress. You can have a um, snoring uh, partner. You can have um, sleep inefficiency, which is hampered by light. So what do we mean by that? Blue light, which comes from your cell phone, your computer, whatever, you need to get rid of that in the bedroom. No TVs in the bedroom. Even the lids are so thin that even a small amount of light can penetrate uh, into the pupil and decrease the amount of melatonin, which is your sleep hormone. But beyond that, guess what? Melatonin also uh, is important for your immune system. So you're really doing yourself a tremendous disservice. Not only do you get less sleep, your brain can't process at night, which is what this is all about. So during the nighttime, and Lynn, you may be interested in this, that um, the brain totally reorganizes and reprocesses all the data. So when people have anxiety, a lot of times they just haven't had time to process anything. And in their sleep cycle, they never get down into deep sleep. They never get down into that restorative phase. They're always still sort of marginally attending in stage one and two, that light sleep, marginally attending sights and sounds and whatever else. So getting really deep, 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 deep sleep allows the brain to rearrange, to process things. That's why one of the reasons why we dream. But in addition to that, then the stomach hormones uh, like ghrelin, which shuts off the urge to, excuse me, leptin, which shuts off the urge to eat. Um, all of these things start balancing out during the night. So it's super important. Exercise is also super important. Everybody goes, oh, I can't exercise. I'm too tired. Well, think about it. Okay, when we just sit, we don't have good circulation at all. It's all pooled in our legs, right? But if you will even get up and stretch, that'll help. So if you do, if anybody does yoga or do a little bit of Tai Chi, if you put your head um, uh, like, you know, for instance, uh, spread your legs out, drop your head down, and just let yourself hang between your outstretched legs, you'll get blood to your brain, and you'll, you'll feel a lot sharper. Um, but it turns out that good health really requires about 30 minutes of moderate exercise five times a week. Now, you can break that up 
It could be jumping rope for five minutes. It could be doing sit-ups for five or 10 minutes a couple times a day. It doesn't have to be all at one time. There's the deal. But anything that you can do will, will make your uh, bone and joints stronger, improve your mood, weight control. I mean, incredible benefits from that. And most people benefit from actually just signing up for a class or doing a sport because then you're doing it with other people and it's not like work. Um, so when you, if you can, after you, the best thing to do is to really start a little walking program, even if it's just for five or 10 or 15 minutes, just get in that daily habit. And I bet Lynn can give you some great tips on doing like a walking meditation when you're walking as well because it's that one, two rhythm, one, two rhythm, one, two rhythm, cycling, one, two rhythm, riding a horse, one, two rhythm, dancing, drumming, those type of things put you into that meditative state and allow you to, to process and really get a higher look on your problems and a different look on your problems. So when you at least get going with walking, then you can look at starting some resistance training, and then flexibility. And the important thing for people in our age group is balance. So one of the best things that you can do is yoga because yoga has some postures which actually work on balance, Tadasana, which is the mountain pose. Going in and out of these poses really does help your balance as well as your flexibility and strength. Yoga doesn't usually improve cardio unless you're doing some strenuous type thing, but yoga and Tai Chi are excellent for, for balance and can be done at all ages. And then strength and resistance training uh, also builds muscle groups. So in elders, and I gotta hate to say this, I'm one, but um, if you right now can put your arms across your chest and then stand up, you're doing pretty well. But what happens is that as we age, our, our thigh and hip muscles weaken. So by doing these little chair exercises, this is really super. If you could do even five or 10 of those several times a day to build up those, those big core muscles, um, that can help you significantly. And endurance, so, <laughs> I named my dog five miles so I can tell people I walk five miles every day. <laughs> a lot of times that's about the endurance we get. But the more that you can do some sort of sport, tennis is another good all around one. Swimming is a wonderful sport that really works the body and builds up endurance. So that that cardio piece, when you put it in, you just have much more juice. You go longer and stronger. Then the other piece is, is let's talk about the mind and let's talk about our social relationships because we all miss them so much with COVID. You're being able to hug someone, being able to really sit down in someone's presence and talk story. And one of the most beautiful things I think about uh, is the Hawaiian culture is that piece of just talking story. Just just being in the presence of someone else and sharing yourself, getting to know someone better. Because those relationships, that they call that aka, those bonds are really important. They build trust, they build well-being, they help diminish differences between people when you can really see this other person that you're working with is truly very similar, more similar than, than not to you. So by building those bridges, talking story is so important. And also like I know Lynn will probably talk about, people all have trauma. And you know, so how, what percentage of people have PTSD? Give a, just give a guess. The answer is 75%. And I think the other 25% is lying. Okay, because most people have been through some sort of terrible emotional trauma if they've been anywhere on the road of life. So all of us have a story to tell. And when we tell our story, we may not think it may be important to other people, but it's incredibly important because a lot of times it'll help someone else have a voice. And they'll say, you went through that? No. And look at you now, how did you do it? And then it, it, it lends for people to, to be okay to take things that they've been hiding inside 
and bring them out. And I don't want to say normalize it, that's probably not the best term, but to really be able to reframe it and transform it into a more healthy thing. And just knowing that other people have gone through trauma, similar trauma, that is so freeing to a lot of people. And then we, in the Maui Cancer Wellness Retreats, we also teach accept. And this is one of the things that I try and do every day. No matter what comes up, I accept it and I work with it, not against it. Okay? Now, I'm not talking about, you know, setting healthy boundaries. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm just saying when something comes to you, say, okay, it showed up. Yep. Now, I accept that it showed up. Now, let's see what I can do with it to make it better. And the, and the brain has these amazing faculties. The left brain is sort of your analytical self. It's objective, it's fact-driven, it, and uh, it tries to keep us in the past because that's what it knows and it tries to reproduce that. But the right-hand side of the brain is our creative portion that's able to see things at a level at which the problem was not created. So Einstein said you cannot solve a problem at the level it's created. You have to be able to step out and step back up to be able to see a creative solution for problems. And so by engaging the right brain, and Lynn is gonna tell us about how to engage the right brain, she's got a beautiful uh, guided visualization that she's going to do as part of relaxation, but that's how you get to the right brain, because the right brain is subjective. It's, it is all sensory. That's where all your sensory is loaded in. So the left brain is only 10% of all your thoughts the right brain has the other 90%. Isn't that amazing? And you can see that there are crosses back and forth between left and right. So you're not just solid one or the other, but you have to really know about the right brain to get into it to solve problems. And your beliefs become your thoughts. Your thoughts become your words, which become your actions, which become your habits, which become your values, which become your destiny. And it's so true. So we need to think about this. And so here's, here's sort of a, a way of looking at it. The tree of self-defeat. We, we have so much negative self-talk that we've learned over the years. And what we want to do instead is have charity, forgiveness, and that's even self-forgiveness, gratitude, kindness, warmth, trust, non-judgment huge one, particularly in these times, um, which is what Carol was mentioning earlier with all the problems that, that have arisen. So we want to really encourage people to um, really focus on creativity and acceptance and motivation, self-motivation and joy and health so that you can have a full, rich life. And when you find blocks to your beliefs, let's get in there and explore it. Don't be angry with yourself because sometimes we just don't have the skills to express our feelings. So we have to learn how to do it. And we have to learn that it's okay. And particularly, how can we express them in a, in, a, in a healthy fashion? And a lot of people won't put their self first. They think, oh, that's being selfish. But really, if you're not taking care of yourself, you'll never be able to give the gift that you are. So it's imperative that we learn to uh, work on these things. So these next couple slides are from Miller and Rolnick's work on the stages of change. So the first step, and let me, oh, I think I've already gone over my time. So um, it's now, what, what time do you have? Because I, anyway, we can uh, skip and go on to the next person because I'm clearly on a roll here. And we can do the rest of that at another time if there's interest. So I see Lilette's here. Yay. Okay, so let me get let me jump here. Stop share. Thanks, Bridget. Yeah, so yeah. we can um I think Carol was going to share something about the planting plants. 
Great. She's muted. Carol, you're muted. There we go. Oh, technology. Whew. Sometimes I feel so old when I'm on things like this. So hello everyone. My name is Carol Reynolds and I am the new president. Hey, hey, I love it. Of a Hickam Pearl Harbor um, Rotary Club. We had our first meeting yesterday. It was absolutely fantastic. So um, I am going to tell you a little bit about gardening. And my topic is called Life Began in the Garden. I wrote it down. I don't have fancy slides. Those were beautiful, by the way. And I was very intrigued, Miss Bridget. Thank you. Um, I wrote some stuff down, so I'm just going to read it to you all and share it. Okay, here we go. I said, gardening for me began as a form of anxiety taming, especially this time around. I've done gardening before. You know, you want to grow a plant that you wanted or nutritional purposes. I was telling them earlier, my favorite is um, marjoram, I think you call it. We call it broadleaf thyme. And uh, so my journey learning about herbs and plants began of course at home in the West Indies. Um, I have always been an herbalist in training. Why, why do we do that? We always do that. Herbalist <laughs> in training <laughs> with my grandmother, right? We drank a lot of bush tea. She always seemed to be wanting to clean us out of some, clean us out. We always seem to have junk inside apparently. Um, but I did get wonderful skin from it, so I'm not complaining. Um, this time around, though, the tr truth is the fear of dying. You know, when the pandemic hit, my, my own personal anxiety level went to here. I was always the person that people can come to and, you know, have a conversation with, sit down, and, you know, I, I was that go-to lady. And then all of a sudden, I, I couldn't be that for anybody. I, I, as an empath, everything was coming to me, and I didn't know how to release it. Um, so I began gardening, and then the civil unrest made even heighten it even worse um, as a woman of color. So, but I found a place after I started planting things, and I'm looking over there because I could see my garden. Um, I found a place where I can go outside and pray. Um, I did some grounding techniques where I take off my shoes. I would rake first people just to make sure no slugs were out there. And I would dance in the dirt kind of thing. I sort of kind of was reconnecting my own self back to nature. And uh, I found that it was becoming more of a spiritual journey for me. So I started planting like everything. And my daughter, who is a certified um, herbalist, she, she didn't even grow anything, which was so weird. She knew how to teach people. She's a juicer. She does juicings and things. And so we have started this thing together where she's now growing and planting plants and stuff too. So it was really good therapy for us all. My son is um, a botanist at UH. So I was tapping into his knowledge as to what to plant to make sure that I was doing those things correctly. Um, I joined several groups. Um, 808 Green Thumb, I think is a garden they have, you, yeah, Arlene's on there, and uh, it's fantastic idea, and I just, I read everything. Every time somebody has a problem, I make sure my garden doesn't have it, and they have these great plant exchanges and, and all that. I haven't gone out there yet. There's a lot in Kapolei, and great places on Maui and Big Island, also part of that group, um, and I, I, I'm going to be a gardener now for life, planting every little thing I could find. Um, this is what else I put down here. So my intent now, though, is to take some herbalist courses and finish the training. I'm going to get that certificate before this whole thing is over. Um, one of the things I was thinking recently that I said, I wish I had a farm. And then I was like, wait, I get up 6 o'clock now in the morning just to look out the window and make sure my plants are being watered. I, and I have like a... This is my space. I could, that was just a thought. I, I can't do a farm thing. Um, let me see what else I put. Some mornings. So recommendations. 
uh, one of the things I, I teach, um, I'm the religious education director for Hickam. And so I was telling them earlier, a lot of the airmen would come into my office sometimes uh, just, to, just to talk. And it can be unofficial, right? They don't have to report it. I don't have to record it anywhere. They will just close the door and they'll say, Auntie Carol, I need to talk. And so when they started, of course, they can't come in. So they were calling me for advice. What, what do I do? Uh, some of them are 20-year-olds, just left home. We put them first in a dorm in a new base by themselves to be grown-ups. And then pandemic hits. They can't run home to mom. There's no, they can't run to the commander. They have to be airmen, military uh, personnel. And so I recommended getting a succulent. My husband said, what's a succulent? It is a cactus or one of these little plants that you don't need to care for diligently. You really can live and let go. I have had this little one for about three months, long before actually. And this is the, as much water that I put in it. Mm. I squeeze this full of water and I leave it for a week. Oh, that's and it's fun. been growing slowly, but growing. So I recommended this to my airmen, and one of them, her name, uh, I won't say her name, but she has uh, now um, graduated to a lanai garden. She says, I'm growing tomatoes, Auntie, and I'm, I'm like, what? In a bucket, in, a, in a, one of those little things, trays, right? So um, the piper actually came with the... It came with the cactus. <laughs> I guess they, they said they made it idiot proof. <laughs> like This is what you do. But I think it's like you can buy them I, in the garden shop. I like to go to the, the actual nurseries. I, I shop at Home Depot and those places, but the nurseries have people will actually tell you what you need. So it goes there. Um, and I recommended that to some of those airmen and I had about six or seven, and now they're telling me that they have introduced succulent garden to others, and they are doing really well. So I recommend that. So what I would like us all to do, we don't have a lot of us on here, 14 of us, I'm seeing, is that even though you may be gardeners already, and you may already have plants in your house, I would like everyone to get either a plant or a succulent and care for it. You will talk to it. You will have conversations with it. These are the only people that don't answer you back. And they can keep all your secrets, right? And then the next time we meet, this will be our little show and tell, right? We can talk about it. We can say, hey, look what it's doing. Make sure there's no brown tips. If it's brown tips, you've waited too long to water it. And if the leaves are all squished and flat, you've really left it too long. <laughs> to it. it doesn't need that much attention, right? Um, I did write something that I want to tell you. While I love, what I love about my new practice is the anticipation of waking up to see a new flower, to see new vegetables. Um, next time I will actually take some, I did a video and it's on my Facebook page. I have cucumbers. There are four cucumbers on there. I'm so excited. I saw some bees flying around and then cucumbers are forming, so great. Um, why is this thing so loud? William, can you close the door? Uh, so let me see what else. Sorry about oh. that. So even when life, I put down here, even when life seems to be at a standstill, we have been provided with seeds and plants to produce. So I ask you to so a change, so a change, you hear that little thing right there? And watch the change within you. Ta-da! Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all I got. <laughs> Come easy. Awesome, awesome. Okay, Roz, um, you can show us your plant and we'll see if it's black or brown <laughs> next month. <laughs> okay. Everybody, Randy Wong is on the line and he's going to show you some moves to relax and and he's a Tai Chi expert and and uh, he and he did this um, 
he showed the Honolulu Sunset Club how to do this. And, and so he's going to, he's a surgeon and a doctor and a Tai Chi expert. <laughs> okay, Randy, Dr. Randy Wong, let, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, uh, I am a plastic surgeon and um, I've been teaching Tai Chi for over 30 years. Uh, currently with the still a moving center in Kaka'ako. And um, when we did the Sunset Rotary, uh, basically it was right after COVID hit. And at that time they were expressing a lot of concern about the respiratory issues. And when you think of it, you know, that, that mantra, I can't breathe, it's not just in the COVID area, but it's also in the uh, Black Lives Matters uh, and, and you know domestic violence issues. It's basically, I think, energetically, what has happened, the earth is saying it can't breathe. It was being stifled with, with pollution and so forth. And one of the benefits of the sort of, sort of the COVID pandemic is that it's forced everybody to kind of slow down a little bit. And that slowing down, I think, has helped our carbon footprint. It's helped clear the air. And um, so that's, in, in a sense, I think something to look forward to in that we should all be able to breathe better. Um, can you uh, highlight my video uh, so I can do some demonstrations on some exercises? So anyway, uh, as I was saying, the original issue was respiratory. And uh, I actually demonstrated a couple of Qigong exercises which would increase your lung capacity. Now, like anybody going through daily life, your, your lung capacity is working um, in its mid-range. But what we really want to do is exercise it so that it actually tops out the top range, it expands the top range, and also pushes all the air out so you actually can expand the lower range as well. So you want to actually squeeze all that air out. So anatomically, when you think of it, your diaphragm is a large muscle. It runs over the stomach and the liver and separates the chest cavity from the abdominal cavity. When you inhale, that muscle contracts. And as it does so, it's pushing all your guts down and increasing the, um, uh, the lung space. And when you exhale, that muscle has to relax. And so yes. relax, it allows the lung capacity to decrease and the abdominal contents will come up into the chest. Okay, I'm okay. not able to see myself. Is, is everybody? We can okay. see you. Oh, okay, good, good. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm on now. Okay. So what we want to do, and I'm going to back up. Can you still hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. So in order to, I've got two exercises. I'm trying to keep it simple. So, uh, and everybody can do this. Okay. So the first exercise is to work on the, uh, yeah. the lower part of your lung capacity. So what we're going to do is force all the air out and uh, standing up would be great. You could do this sitting down as well. Have your feet about shoulder width apart, okay? And what we're gonna do is basically uh, raise our arms to, check to shoulder level and inhale on that. And when you're at the top of your lung capacity, inhale even further, pulling it back to your shoulders and bring your elbows as far back as possible. So what you're gonna do is open up the front of the chest and you're gonna squeeze your shoulder blades behind you, okay? And that's going to be the, at the top of your lung. Then exhale, letting the hands drop down to hip level. And then when you have no more air in the lungs, lower or relax your knees so you drop about six inches, okay? And that will squeeze that last bit of air out of your lung, okay? Then you're gonna inhale as your hands rise, and at the top of your lungs, you pull back and stand up. And then you let it out. And then when there's no more air, 
you compress, squeeze that last little bit out. Okay, inhale. And at the top of the lung, inhale even more. What you're imagining is you're pulling in extra energy or chi from the air and then let it out. And at the bottom of the lung, compress. Okay, do that a couple more times. Inhale. And suck it in even further, coming up. Exhale. And when you have no more air, squeeze that last little bit out. Okay, inhale. Now you can do this on your own, at your own rate. And what you'll find is you'll end up slowing down because you'll be able to get by with less oxygen. And you'll be surprised, particularly this part where you compress. If you keep your glass open, you don't have to breathe, although some of you will need to. And this is the range, top end and the bottom end. Okay. The second exercise I was going to show you is basically having your palms coming together, but not touching. Okay, and then your left finger is turned down. One goes up and one goes down. Inhale as you do this. And when your right hand is above your head, right at the top, you want to slide the lower hand behind your back. And you're going to try and stretch the distance between the fingers as far apart as you can at the top of your, your lung capacity. And then when you need to exhale, you bring the lower hand back in, palms back together and then you switch to the other side. Now what this does, it exercises your intercostal muscles to just kind of squeeze that last bit out. So you're actually working one lung and then the other lung. Okay, so when you're stretching this way, the side where the hand is up, all these ribs are opening up. Okay, then on the other side, the ribs are basically squeezing down. And then when you come back the other way, you swap positions. This side now, the ribs are all expanded. So the intercostal muscles are relaxed. And on this side, they're tighter and compressing the, the ribs. Okay, so first exercise works the diaphragm. The second exercise really works the intercostal muscles. And I think if you um, do have the ability to do this, 10 minutes a day, you will notice your ability to hold your breath will increase. In fact, some of you may even want to go free diving because you'll be able to actually have the top and bottom end capacity, your functional residual capacity uh, will expand your lung capacity. And so um, this I think is going to be uh, in preparation for, you know, heaven forbid the event that you do catch an infection with COVID and you do have to go to the hospital. And what I'm trying to do is keep as many people off the ventilators as possible. So if you can exercise your lung and increase that lung capacity, very likely you'll be a survivor and you won't have to get on a ventilator because that's, that's probably the, the, uh, the most telling thing that your physiology is not going to be able to uh, breathe for yourself and you need mechanical ventilation to assist. So we just want to keep people off ventilators because some of us will need it and uh, let's hope that it's not any of us. Any other questions? Any questions? Um, Actually, I could I could feel the expansion of those intercostal muscles. It was really interesting. I've never seen that thought before. And I'm going to actually use that for patients with lung cancer who have had breast cancer and had surgery and are, are stiffened up on that side or 
people with kyphoscoliosis. I think that's just such a valuable uh, tool. Thank you so much for sharing that. Oh, my pleasure. Mm. Really nice. Any questions for Dr. Wong? No. Thank you so much for being with us. I'll ask one, if we do Ryla this year, do you want to come and show the kids how to do that? If you do what this year? So if we do the Ryla Rotary Youth Leadership Award, which I'm not sure we're going to, so that does a presentation there. I do a presentation. I do some relaxation stuff with folks, but not that. I mean, that's great. And I think the kids would really get into it. We can explain no, more about it later. I'd be uh, happy. One thing I do is for releases, I tighten up and tighten the muscles as tight as you can. And then as you breathe out, you release. And I work from the feet all the way up to the head. But I like this also. I mean, it's really, really good. Yeah. And yes, I, I like that technique. I use that also. Uh, I do a little hypnosis, and that's a great way to actually get people relaxed yeah. into that hypnotic state. So, um, yeah. yes, it, it really works. Yeah. So, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. My, my pleasure. Thank you. Okay. So, Naomi, I shared the link on the chat also. Okay, uh, so let's see. Um, Lynn, do you want to go ahead? Okay. Okay, can you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, hi, I'm Lynn Goya, and I'm a psychologist. And we're going to be doing a guided meditation today. So, don't let the, the word meditation intimidate you because you have already been doing it, and you probably don't even know. Because imagine that you're in your shower and you're thinking about your son who lives in Washington state and you're worried about his family and he has two little kids and you're wondering how are they doing, doing during this sheltering in place? You're kind of worried about them. Or you might be thinking about your grandchildren. What's it gonna be like when they go back to school and they're hardly going to eat lunch and have social distancing. So your physical body is in the shower, but your mind has been in Washington state, in someone's house, in your son's house, or at your grandchild's school, in their cafeteria even. So your mind can take you places it does take you places all the time but thinking about things like that usually causes people to feel anxious so how guided meditation is different is it's very purposeful and the purpose of our guided meditation today is for you to relax relax your your mind and relax your body Okay, there are many benefits of meditation, and these are all scientifically uh, researched and proven to be true, that it reduces stress, it controls anxiety, decreases depression, enhances self-awareness about the thoughts that you may have that you're not aware of, it lengthens attention span. It can, a certain kind of meditation can generate kindness towards people that you may not feel very kind toward. It can improve sleep. It can even control pain and decrease blood pressure. So it's pretty amazing. Okay, so there are lots of different kinds of meditation. 
In, in today's meditation, we're going to do a visualization and we're going to the beach. Okay, there's a thing in psychology called an ab reaction. So some people, when they do meditation, very, very few people, they may have a bad reaction to the thing we are visualizing. Let's say they had trauma at the beach or they associate the beach with a bad memory. Um, if this is the case with you, then please don't do the meditation. Or if at any time while we're doing it, if you feel uncomfortable or you start to feel anxious, then please walk away from the computer and maybe go get a drink of water, but come back at the end and talk to me and I'll process it with you. Okay. All right. So I have a beach scene to help you, but you can imagine any beach that you want, okay? You know, the strange thing is I could not find a video of a Hawaii beach. <laughs> this is one in Thailand. Okay, so let's start first. Randall really was a good preface to this because let's start first with your body being relaxed, which it already should kind of be relaxed. Okay, so instead of doing what I normally do, which is a total... Um, Rel body relaxation scan. We're just going to do a few areas. Okay. So first of all, excuse me, my dog is trying to eat my, <laughs> my treat on the table. Um, <laughs> um, okay. So first of all, I know a lot of people keep tension in their shoulders. So I'd like you to squeeze up your shoulders to your ears and then drop it. And just relax. Okay, then stretch out your arms, push out your arms, and then relax. And go ahead and relax your hands on your lap. Okay, now push out your legs, push it out, make it long, and then relax. Okay, your body may not be totally relaxed, but just be mindful of what you're sitting on. Feel the chair under you and kind of sink into it. Okay, I'm going to start this video. Why don't you go ahead and close your eyes? If at any time you feel uncomfortable about closing your eyes, go ahead and open them and take a peek at the other people. I want you to feel safe. Okay, now I'm going to teach you a different method of breathing. So you're going to be taking a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Then follow your breath as it goes all the way into your chest and down to your belly. Then hold it a second. And now exhale and follow it as it goes out. Chest contracting, belly contracting. There's a, a rhythm to this breathing, and one way to do it is to breathe in 
to the count of four. And briefly hold it. And then breathe out to the count of six. Okay, go ahead and do that on your own. With each, each out breath, imagine that you're exhaling all the stresses of your day, or at least a piece of it, that it's being exhaled out into the universe, and it's not in your body anymore. As we go through this visualization, just continue to be mindful of your breathing and try to keep with that four, six rhythm. Okay, go ahead and imagine sitting on the beach, any beach, and it's about midday So you're sitting in the sand and you feel the sand is a little bit warm and then you dig your toes into it and you feel the cold sand underneath and then you feel the sun on your face and maybe on your shoulder. And there's a light breeze. So it's just right. It's not too hot yet, but it's nice and warm. And you can see the waves. It's really kind of low tide. So the wave just kind of slides up the shore, goes into the sand, and then another small wave comes up, disappears into the sand. Another wave comes up. It's very calming because it's so rhythmic. And then you look out toward the horizon and you may see sailboats. They might be the really colorful ones with rainbow colored sails or just white sails. And they're just gliding along the water. And then you can hear the birds. And I wonder if you can hear children laughing and playing and giggling in the water. And maybe you can smell someone starting a barbecue. So let's take a deep breath and see what you do smell. So imagine that you're walking to, into a house and somebody's baking chocolate chip cookies. And so you walk into the house and you take a deep breath in. Okay, take a deep breath. Mmm, it smells so good. Mm. And then exhale. If you do that again, and let's see what you smell. Uh, 
I wonder if you smell the ocean. Or like I said, maybe you smell someone barbecuing. Well, I'm going to leave you. I'm going to let you stay at your beach in quiet for about 30 seconds. And I just want you to bask in the sun. Feel the sun on your shoulders. Hear the birds in the trees and the quiet waves as they come up the shore. And look out toward the horizon and just relish the feeling of it's a totally carefree, relaxing holiday. Okay, go ahead. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to open your eyes. But remember that you can always go back to the scene at home or at work because the visualization is in your mind. Okay, go ahead and slowly open your eyes, feeling calm alert and relax. Feel your body present in the room where you're at and your mind refreshed. For those of you who've never done guided meditations, they can be pretty hard to do on your own. Uh, meditation is hard for anyone who just begins it. So I highly recommend that you download an app. There are so many apps. Uh, many of them you have to pay though. So one, one that's very popular is called Calm, but you do have to pay a monthly subscription for it. And another one is Smiling Mind. And that one is free. So you may want to try a free app at first. So usually meditation, guided meditation apps have meditations with female voices, male voices, all kinds of background sounds. And they take you to all these different places, um, a garden. Um, it can be a little cottage. Um, Visualization can even help you visualize your goals. So there's lots of different kinds of meditation that you might look into. And remember that it has so many benefits, so many different kinds of benefits, depending on what kind of meditation you do. Okay. Are there any questions? Everybody okay out there? Okay, we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next. Okay, everybody okay? <laughs> Hi, Sonia. <laughs> that was very nice, Lynn. Okay. Thank you. Anybody fall over and fall asleep? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Lynn. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. I smelled cookies. <laughs> you felt what? I smelled cookies. 
Oh, you did? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny at the beach, yeah? I know I see. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. I, pre I enjoyed teaching you that. It's awesome. Thanks, Lynn. Thank you, Kate. Bridget? Yeah. Say it again. Do the wrap up. Yeah. So um, I hope you enjoyed this series that, that we put together. Um, we've tried to pull something um, from all these different disciplines, something that will also be fun to do. Uh, so in our, in our upcoming series, we may have things like how to make sourdough bread, or we might have things or, you know, or different techniques. So anyone can give one of these presentations, uh, depending on what you like. And of course, we have to circle back to Carol and bring our little plant, because I think what Carol brought up was just so powerful. And that this is another living sentient thing, isn't it? This plant. And it's another way of us connecting. It's connecting to the earth and the goodness that comes out of the earth. And we're learning to give, we're learning to share. There's a lot of things that come from that. Um, I love Lynn's, ta Lynn's uh, presentation as well. I was just half gone um, because we don't allow our bodies to settle down and get into what we call that parasympathetic state, which is the healing state. So Lynn allowed us to get into that healing state and not even focus on any of our thoughts. So we broke that left brain loop of, wrong, 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 and we went into another area where we could just really relax and reorganize ourselves and rebalance. And speaking of balance, then look at Dr. Wong's work. And I mean, I could feel the difference in my body. It just, I felt very invigorated after that. And so I would like to invite you all for the next series. We'll be planning that with uh, Naomi soon. And we thought we'd have a series of one a month. And uh, just again, other ways that we can share that can make life fun and invigorating and, and get ourselves back into balance. So I hope you all enjoyed this. And if you give us some feedback of what you would like, for the next time, uh, maybe we'll get Arlene to, to tell us how to grow an herb garden, uh, like what Carol said, because marjoram is one of the very powerful aromatherapies that you can actually use for sleep. Okay, you get a little aromatherapy of marjoram, you mix it with a little vetiver, maybe lavender, if you don't like lavender, forget it. If you use chamomile, whatever, you mix those three together, They're, they, they pull the energy down and they make you feel very, very, very calm. So, you know, all these old traditions, the Tai Chi, the herbalism, all of these are just relevant for today. They're just small kind that we can do for ourselves, but yet have big, a big improvement. So thank you very much for all coming. And Naomi, I'll hand it back to you or Lynn or, or uh, Dr. Wong or Carol, any, anybody else? Okay, well, send us your thoughts as to what you'd like to see next time and we'll have some more fun things to do and I do uh, have um I just have a Miss Ross um if anybody is close to Miss Ross we we just need to see it uh, maybe we might just need to bless her with a new one <laughs> we just need to, it looks like it just needs to cut off the dead parts ma'am I I think it will survive with a little a little love it, it it looks like uh, it looks like it just has some parts need to be cut off, and then we that will that will survive. It's doing really well. <laughs> That's metaphoric. Let's cut off those old dead things that don't work anymore. That's right. Don't work anymore. <laughs> but thank you all so much. Very interesting. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So, what what do you guys have as advice for someone who lost the dog? Um, I, what I teach at, at Mary Cancer Wellness Retreat and I taught to the holistic nurses is the power of healing rituals and creating ceremony. And so by building a ceremony around that very important fur child um, that was lost, 
um, that can be very, very helpful. Also, too, uh, honoring that was something that a living memorial. Oh. So, for instance, at, you could put the, um, you could uh, bury the, the dog there or, or put a plant as a marker. Um, maybe the dog liked to do X, Y, or Z, you know, and you could just have a little memorial. You could also um, help others, help, help other dogs. Like when our dog Paca died, um, we waited two weeks and then we adopted another dog who you probably saw. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was just our way of saying, okay, another adopted dog, give another one a chance. Being able to love another dog, although he's not the same as Paca. Right, but, uh, right. It gives you the ability to love and to help another animal. Would be my thought. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you, Naomi, for bringing it up. <laughs> We're getting over it. It's only been two weeks. I know. It just breaks your heart. It does. That's why our new dog is called Buddy. <laughs> okay, he's that's good. Buddy now. Yeah. Well, yeah. we have another dog. We have another dog and she really went into deep depression i didn't realize that dogs could could do that and express that but we're all getting better it's only been two weeks so yeah that's still raw it is it is thank you though so much you guys dr wong did you want to say something uh if you haven't seen that movie by dennis kuwaid uh dog's purpose it oh. raises the possibility, and I do believe this happens, their spirit comes back to you. Thank you. He'll be back. They'll be back. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, Lynn, you know what I'm going through. Oh, you know, an idea I had is, have you ever been to the Humane Society and seen those dog bowls that they have mounted on the wall? No, I haven't. They're from people who donated to the Humane Society. So maybe you could donate in Kaimana's name. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, and then he like have that. a legacy. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll look into it. Thank you. And then it helps to cry with everybody. Cry with all your <laughs> friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. True. Thank you. Mm -hmm. it, uh, we have Rotarians taking Dr. Wong's class, his um, Tai Chi class. So thank you, Dr. Wong, for taking care of our, our, our Rotarians. My pleasure. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Happy Fourth. Thank you. Happy, Happy Fourth. fourth. Safe Fourth. Bye bye. Take bye -bye. care. See you next Thanks. Time. Thank you, Dr. Wong. Thank you, Thank Carol. You. Thank you, Naomi. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Thanks, Naomi. That was really, really good. Thank you for doing this. Are you gone?